It had been a few days since Stogaze had dragged Robinpaw back to camp, breathless and trembling with fear after her apprentice had almost killed herself from picking a poison mushroom. Although the scarred brown medicine cat had trembled with emotion while she sat over Robinpaw, carefully mixing the last assassin beetle in her storage with various herbs and forcing them down Robinpaw's throat, Doges had once again been able to hold herself together with a stern sense of calm during the emergency. The terror of the Sky Stones falling and devastating aftermath of so much damage to so many of the clan members may have given the still hesitant medicine cat nightmares but it had also given her lessons in how to stay calm and tend to the injured when the forest was, quite literally, on fire around her. That calm had helped her to save Robin Paw, though the young medicine cat apprentice was still terrifyingly weak. For the past few days, it was all Robin Paw could do to lie in the moss bed by Dogaze's herb pile, her body too weak and exhausted to do more than prop herself against the moss bed and exchange a few words with the concerned cats who stopped by. And two of those concerned cats, in particular, stopped by far more often than the rest of Moss Clan. In fact, Doge's had somewhat pointedly snapped more than once at Barcham and Lizardpaw that if they didn't have fleas or coughs bothering them, they could perhaps find somewhere else to linger. But so far, neither of them had taken the hint. So, when do you think you'll get better? Bartram meowed slowly, sticking his head out to sniff cautiously in Robin Paw's direction. His movements were hesitant and his eyes wide. Even his sniffing seemed gently done, as though he was worried Robin Paw would disappear in a puff of dust right under his nose. Dogaze rolled her eyes and gently pushed her way past Bartram, a small patch of dried herbs in her mouth. She'll get better, Dogaze meowed, putting her small bundle down. She just needs rest and good food. Dogaze glanced over at the prey pile and frowned at the familiar sight of so many drying beetles sitting in the corner. Something better than beetles, at least. Oh, Bartram. Robin Pa sighed suddenly. Bartram whipped his head towards her, as though he heard something in her voice that no other cat, perhaps not even Robin Pa herself, heard as well. Despite feeling terribly weak and tripping over her own paws, Robin Pa's eyes were still bright, even if her face had become somewhat thin. Are you still going with Moss Clan to fish at the lake? I would love a fish, if the clan could spare one, when you get back. For for you, Robin Pa? Uh, of course! Bartram stammered the words before he realized what he was saying, then flushed hot under his pelt then even more at the contented sigh and deeply happy smile Robin Paw gave at his words, murmuring fish softly to herself before rolling back over in her moss bed. He hadn't meant to make a promise, but... Are fish all she needs? Lizard Paw meowed suddenly, making everyone jump. He didn't talk often, and when he did, it was often unusually loud. Loud enough for him to hear over the grass and bushes, he said, but also loud enough to startle a cat if they weren't expecting it. Dogaze let out a soft sigh to settle her nerves and glanced over at Robin Paw, a distant, thoughtful look in her eyes. Well, I could use more sweet grass, but... Dogaze glanced down at the tiny pile of dried herb at her feet and shrugged, her tail thumping against the ground in annoyance. It is out of season, and wishing won't make it bloom at my feet... Lizard Paw stepped forward and sniffed at the sweet grass piled in front of Dogaze, his eyes intent behind his mask of green fur. Although the clan had gotten used to moss leaf, lizard paw, and oak glade's green fur, it was always a bit of a surprise to see the small leaves that grew in semicircles around Lizard Paw's eyes now, too. With a sudden explosive sneeze, Lizard Paw sat up, nodded, and then turned and walked off into the bushes without a word. None of the gathered cats called out after him. They were used to his different ways by now. So, um, I'll, I'll just go work on that fish, then, Bartram stammered, his voice slightly choked. He forced a smile and waved his tail towards Robin Paw, stepping to the side towards the bushes. Just going to go, er, uh, practice a few stretches for, um, for the fishing. I'll be back as soon as I, well, I'll be back, Robin Paw.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Warrior Cats Challenge here in The Sims 3 with all expansion packs and quite a bit of custom content. And we are here in Moss Clan again, taking a day to see what has happened to the clan now that Robin Paw is beginning to recover from her almost deadly experience with that poison mushroom. And yes, I did hear a lot of you guys in our comments before and honestly, if we had more cats in the clan, I probably would have taken that 100 as an absolute cannot be refused death roll and I think in the past I have mentioned that a 100 is always an absolute death roll so really Robin Paw should sort of be dead I'm going to acknowledge that a definitely should be dead but a lot of you guys also had some great points that one of the reasons I kept Robin Paul alive and I didn't realize it at the time until I realized later like oh yeah that is kind of why I followed my intuition on that not only did I forget that I had said in the past that a 100 roll was absolute, no healing items can be used, and I will go ahead and tentatively say that is definitely the thing from now on. If it's a 99, we can use healing items, but if it's a 100 roll, then Robin Pa, I'm sorry my sweet, you just would not survive. But um, we don't have that many characters in Moss Clan right now. We don't have that many cats, and if you guys have ever tried to write a story, or if you guys have ever tried to say, I think you could really compare what we do here at Moss Clan with, say, hosting your own role-playing game. If you have a bunch of friends, maybe you play uh, like D&D, &D, maybe you play something along those lines where you're doing role playing. Well, if somebody has a bad role and you just go, okay, well, your character's dead, then that kind of stops the story in its tracks. And that's kind of what happened with Robin Paw. But I am definitely going to be looking into ways to really kind of penalize her from having such an intense experience. Like we may give her a lingering effect. I may even make that something where you guys get to vote and decide if that should be something that happens. You are Star Clan. Maybe Star Clan says, Robin Paw, you stayed alive, but it's for a reason. So as Star Clan, why is Robin Paw alive? I really want to hear that from you guys. Does she have a deeper purpose? Is she supposed to do something special? Was it just sympathy? Was it just the fact that the assassin beetle was really potent this time around? I mean, there's so many beetles in Moss Clan. Maybe that's why. I would love to hear from you guys, like, why you think Robin Paw is still alive. And I actually am really enjoying seeing the effect that her near-death experience has begun to have on several of the cats. And we're going to be talking about that and working with them in just a second. But I just wanted to finish off by saying that, yes, I am totally, we're wrapping up season one pretty soon here, and I am totally overhauling how we are going to handle fighting because there's going to be so much more fighting in season two there's going to be so many more risks in season two and I'm overhauling how often the cats are probably going to have really bad things happen to them, what kind of things can happen to them. We're going to have daily random generators. I rolled a random generator today, actually, to pick the two cats we'll be following. So I will focus in on the two cats of the day in just a moment here as well, too. But uh, one of the things I did want to say is when our cast of characters and the clan is a certain size, then I probably will, like, alter the risk for, like, bad things that can happen just a teensy bit. And I'll explain that more in the behind the paws in the future but right now our clan as many many of you guys realized is very small and we're really skewed robin paws the only female born in generation two <laughs> and squirrel leaf does not want to have kits she wants to nuzzle what are you doing going to nuzzle bartram i guess you can squirrel leaf She's so fickle. She shouldn't have kids, you guys. She's really fickle. She has a very hard time actually getting attached to any particular cat. She's very flighty. She goes from cat to cat. She probably isn't somebody who should be burdened with kits. But then again, she is in the clan. So I guess the clan could help out. But yeah, we don't really have any kits coming. And Robin Paw's loss would have actually slowed the story down at a crux when we are starting to go right over the edge into season two. But I heard you guys, and I will definitely take into consideration what we will be doing with all of the cats and the random generators in the future. Good, and Briarstock is getting some food. Oakglade ate, and he wants to sniff Briarstock. So hurry, let Briarstock finish eating. And you can go ahead and sniff. Are you going to have this? <gasps> Rejected! Oh, do you guys see this? Squirrelip just tried to nuzzle Bartram, and he is like, my heart belongs to another. And I think we know who his big crush is. And I think a lot of you guys are really good at reading whether or not that crush is actually reciprocated. So yeah, that's happening. Also, I saw you, Willow, standing there creepily watching the cats. 
<laughs> go ahead and tend your garden and like leave us be for a little bit, Willow. But yes, so the other thing is Robin Paw's illness has actually had a pretty interesting effect on all sorts of the cats of the clan. You can see that Lion Star, who's actually one of the two cats that we're going to be focusing on today because the random generator said so. Lion Star is really worried. He's watching over his daughter. Everybody kind of takes shifts sleeping next to her over here by the medicine pile. We don't really have like a proper, uh, we're still working at least on having a proper medicine den because if you guys recall the last medicine den kind of uh, kind of literally blew up in smoke <laughs> this right here with the meteor and the ashes of the flowers that once upon a time were brought to doge's this was the old medicine den and doge's she still has her own issues with star clan so she kind of just has her her little medicine den right here it's like a little medicine nook cranny she has a medicine cranny that's what she has and she's nervous to have anything bigger. So that's why we have this kind of tucked over here. And where did Doge's go? Doge's is, oh, she's off going. Oh, she's going to try to groom Squirrel Ape. Oh, Doge's does really care a lot about Squirrel Ape. So they're hanging out together too. Uh, Briarstock, you're not one of the main cats we're going to focus on today. You have tons of energy though, and the prey pile is low. So I think that especially having just eaten these two warriors would probably go off. But where is Red Paw? All right, now this is something interesting to note. Redpaw actually has fleas and he's very lonely. And I think that's because he kind of wants this. He wants this attention. His mentor right now is Briarstock. Oakglade had enough attention. He already became a warrior. Redpaw is the warrior right now and his sister almost died. And even though he feels really bad about that and is clearly trying to watch over her, his litter mate even, not just his sister, but like his litter mate, which I think is an even closer bond. Do you guys think that it would be a closer bond too? Even though that's happening, like I think that he would actually be feeling a little bit jealous because that's all this attention on Rob and Paw again. And what kind of attention does Red Paw ever get? And all this attention about Oakglade and Briarstock pushing themselves beyond the limits to be able to try to fill up the stuff in the prey pile. So I could totally see Red Paw starting to get a little bit jealous. He also wants to get rid of his fleas. I'm sure that is not helping anybody's uh, anybody's patience. And I'm sure Dogaze is about to realize that, hey, there's a bit of a flea problem going around. So so we'll send her over to gather up some citrus and to clean the various cats. Oh, Squirrel Ape, you're so sweet. And she wants to sniff doggies. So we'll go ahead and let her sniff doggies. And then maybe work on her hunting skill. She also wants to talk with Bee Kit. Sniff Wild Fang. I forgot about that, Squirrel Ape. All right. So yes, Red Paw is a little bit jealous, which may be a bit inappropriate, but is true for how he's feeling about his sister. Oh, and there's, there's uh, Moss Leaf. I think that Dogaze would go over and maybe try. Moss Leaf, are you trying to eat or something though? Oh, no, she's just trying to watch the bug, so it should be okay. She might try to socialize in tail signs and maybe a nuzzle and maybe some grooming with Moss Leaf and explain that she thinks that uh, Robin Paw is going to be okay. And Squirrel Ape, what does Squirrel Ape want to do? She wants to socialize with Bee Kit. Where's little Bee Kit? Bee Kit's, uh, are you snoozing Bee Kit? What are you doing? He's, he's coming up to sleep. Oh, Red Paw, when did you wake up? <laughs> One second I was looking at you, the next second you're over here. And I think Redpaw actually got the fleas from the kits. Oh, and he's rejected from the kits too? Oh man, I wonder, I think that he might, we're going to actually make him hiss at the kit because he got rejected. And he's feeling very lonely and bitter and frustrated right now. And I know this is a really sad kind of thing to do. But I do think he would hiss at the kit. And I don't think he would be happy right now. And Lizard Paw just gained hunting skill. What? He is out there like trying to go ahead and gain some skill points. So that's the other thing that Robin Paws. Um, Robin Paw. Oh, improve his hunting skill. He actually. Oh, a light beetle. Jeez. It's not much, to be honest, but at least it's something. I'm impressed. Uh, Lizard Paw is one of those cats where I won't control if he wants to try to develop his hunting skill. And a whole termite. Wonderful, Oakglade. More, more beetles for Moss Clan. I'm sure that'll work out just fine. Meanwhile, Dogaze is reassuring Moss Leaf and the other of the cats who have been affected by what's going on, Doge's is actually feeling pretty calm. She feels like it is a little bit her fault that actually Robin Paw ended up becoming so sick um, because she didn't teach Robin Paw enough. But rather than make her make that 
make Dogez feel fearful about what's going to happen with her apprentice. It's actually making Dogez realize that she needs to work even harder to really study the plants of the forest. She doesn't even know what all the plants of the forest do. And so Dogez wants to go out and research them more. So we might have Dogez go around and collect up some plants today. She also wants to collect up some mushrooms and maybe start a little mushroom pile somewhere, like a little mushroom harvest, because she just feels um, very strongly about having constant mushrooms up and about. And I think that's because in her clan, deer clan that she came from, they were deep in the woods and they always had mushrooms. And so she's familiar with mushrooms and their uses. And we might even, just like we were talking about hunting skills last time and having different effects for cats hunting skills, like a medicine cat, their level of hunting skill may determine how effective they are or what chance they have. Oh, Moss Leaf, look, it's a lizard. Oh no, a briar stalk. What happened? You were supposed to catch it. Oh man. But uh, Dogaze's hunting skill, its level may affect how effective the things that she's trying to treat a cat with R. And I love that idea because it makes a really powerful medicine cat even more important. So I really, really love that. Who's fighting? <gasps> Robin Paul? Oh, and you got fleas from your brother? Are you fighting with your brother, Robin Paul? What brought that on? And we have to keep Robin Paul really exhausted, actually. I, I can't believe this. And I feel like Red Paw, he doesn't know what to do. He just feels like he's being rejected by everybody. Did he really just fight with his sister? He's got a super tight relationship with her, though. So I think it was just a little thing. Maybe he just said something kind of snippy and Robin Paw is sort of sitting to the side trying to ignore it. She'll take a little nap. She can't go too far from the medicine den. Uh, medicine cranny. <laughs> because she does need to, she does need to try to gain a little bit more health. And then Squirrely, are you just going to watch a bug? Hmm. All right, Squirrelly, you go ahead and do that. But yeah, Redpaw is feeling a little bit jealous. Dogaze is feeling like she needs to go into the forest and learn more about the plants. And we definitely have a little bit of a flea issue. So, oh, and maybe what we can do is if a medicine cat has like 10 out of 10 hunting, then they can get rid of fleas expertly. What do you guys think about that? Instead of having to spend entire episodes just hunting down items to get rid of fleas. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe we'll have a thing where if a cat gets fleas... Then what we'll do is we will have a very low level roll, like maybe a 5 to 10% roll depending on the season or depending on if there's an infestation in camp that may give them a minor illness. And our, our illness rolls are going to start being tiered as well so that a cat that like, I don't know, walks into a bush isn't suddenly going to like die. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit more like, oh, they got a thorn in their paw and they lost a, a hunting skill point. Oh, they like... Um, they bonked their head on a, a tree chasing a squirrel and they're going to be tired and have a bit of a concussion all day and sleep all day. Uh, you know, we're going to do more things like that. Or maybe we could even start doing things where if we haven't turned any items the way we're supposed to, we could say oh, this isn't them getting sick per se, but it's a bad luck roll and they lost all the items they're carrying or they lost a hunting skill. That, you guys, we're layering the complexity and it's going to be really awesome. It's going to be very, very awesome. So let's see, what, is, what does Honey Wish wish to do? Honey Wish actually wants to spend a little bit of time with her kits and that actually brings up a little Bumble Kit. Bumble Kit is the second cat out of the two cats. So Lion Star, who hasn't woken up yet, <laughs> typical lazy Lion Star, it is actually one of his traits being lazy but he's also adventurous and very kind so he's kind of an interesting leader that way but uh the other cat who rolled being today's daily focus between all of the storylines is actually bumble kit and because kits don't have their wishes yet until they get older i figured every cat in the clan who has a desire to interact with bumble kit can go ahead and do so and we're going to go ahead and have honey wish come over and spend a little bit of time nuzzling and snuggling and sniffing and maybe even doing a little bit of playing and then maybe more grooming because I think that she actually got the fleas first from her kits. <laughs> I think the kits are actually the originator of the fleas, even though kits can't have fleas. That's where I think they came from. But yeah, we might do something where fleas can give some sort of an illness. We might do something... Um, where the medicine cats, if they have level 10 skill, can remove fleas just by grooming, but they can't be rejected for the grooming. If they're rejected, then it just doesn't work. Come on, Oakglade, you can do it. Oh, it's, it's shifting. Leisure day, huh? Take a dive into the pool or stroll around the summer festival. Well, the cats don't have to worry about that, but that does remind me 
I almost forgot. Oh, and it looks like Moss Leaf's off to go groom. Oh, she's going to share tongs first thing in the morning with her with her mate. Oh, so Lion Star's waking up. And Dogaze, we are going to actually send Dogaze over. And she's going to gather up some of the citrus that we need to cure the infestation. No! Uh, I sent her to tend the garden. I did do it. That's my fault. That's my fault. I sent Willow to tend the garden and I forgot that'll make her automatically harvest everything. So we do have the citrus. I just have to find flowers now and we can trade in the flowers for some of the citrus depending on their value. So I totally forgot about that. Sorry, Dogaze. Oh well, we'll have to send her from flower to flower now. Too bad she can't send her apprentice, like we can't send her apprentice with her because that would make this go a little bit faster. But we do have fleas, so we need to get rid of them. But I like that idea. A medicine cat with level 10 skill will be able just to get rid of fleas. Now, one other thing, uh, he's actually sleeping right now too, so we don't have to worry about it. But you guys heard Bartram earlier? Well, Bartram kind of has gotten himself into a little bit of a pickle because he, uh, you know, said that he'd bring some fish to Robin Paw to help her feel better. And you may notice he doesn't really have any skills, but he does have a very strong desire to learn a hunting skill. And so I think that we're going to say that means Bartram really wants to try to actually do this for the, maybe the first time in his life. He actually, sorry, Will is just looking cute. He actually wants to go and try to learn hunting skills so that he can find some prey and share that prey. And don't worry, Willow, you're probably going to be able to pick that many wildflowers today. But I think he wants to find some prey and share that prey so that he can help Robin Paw get better. So that's going to be pretty fun. All right, this is only worth one. <laughs> can't we have, can't we have more? All right, there you go, Dogaze. You have a whole lime. Now you need to find more limes. All right, let's just send her over here. I guess seeds could also count. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. I forget how we make flowers count. Usually, I think we make flowers count for one harvest. So that's actually three items. So I'm going to go ahead because each plant usually has three items. I'm going to go ahead and have Dogaze just walk up to each flower. And then we'll go ahead and pick it. And we'll say that's kind of the exchange there of the citrus. And this too is going to be uh, kind of revamped a little bit as time goes on with our Warrior Cat series so that we will be able to, let's go ahead and pick this sulfur, so that we'll be able to make this a little bit more fair and a little bit more interesting with some of the challenge that we have with medicine cats, their items. Oh, and then what I was mentioning earlier, we are thinking about medicine cats and we are thinking about like, if it's a medicine cat, then their hunting skill means their healing abilities. And maybe some cats will be fisher cats and their hunting, their fishing skill will be um, their hunting skill. And we may have cats where they can have different types of hunting skills. Like uh, moss leaf, for instance, she may have normal forest hunting skill and that would be one thing. She may have two leg territory hunting skill and that'd be another thing. She may have dog fighting skill and that'll be different from inter-clan fighting skill and that'll be different from like all of those other fighting skills so i think that will be a really interesting way to kind of swing things most like when did you get citrus oh we'll just have to give that to dogaze good grief all right and dogaze let me go ahead and sell these okay that's only worth one um you know what yeah i'm just gonna say each flower because they're kind of rare and they're not like plant they're not like the stones that branch clan gets i'm gonna say each flower is worth three pieces of an herb so we sold three and i'm gonna have all the citrus go over here and then i'm gonna give her green leaf because green leaf is really important for a bunch of just general healing that the cats need to do and then dogaze willow you can go ahead and just like tend to your garden by watering it now. And then Dogaze can go ahead and go groom all of the cats who currently have fleas and help them be re like removed. Oh my goodness. And what is this? Honey Wish. Look at Honey Wish and Bumble Kit. Oh, and Tommy is finally awake. So I take it that he is ready. He actually seems like he is ready to report for training. And yes, Tommy does need to become a warrior. I'm trying to get it to so that his... Oh, his skill points are over five. When did that happen? <gasps> He's probably going to become a warrior soon then. I totally thought it would take longer. No wonder, Squirrely. Squirrely, who are you off to go nuzzle? Well, Tommy distracted you. So you guys are going to need to train. I think Tommy just wakes up like instantly and is like, okay, Squirrely, let's start training and like just tackles her in the prey pile. No, no walking out into the forest. No trying to set things up. Oh, and Bumble Kit, you're so cute. There we go. And Dogaze is back so she can go ahead and start grooming everybody. 
and kind of interrupting so that she can get rid of all of the fleas that everybody tends to have is having right now. Hopefully we don't share fleas over here. Briar stock looks totally lost. Oh, he wants to go pounce on. Oh, he wants to go pounce on lizard paw. Well, we can leave that be for a bit. Let's see. And red paw. I'm not really going to focus on red paw right now. But anybody want to do something? Briar stock, do you want to sniff bumble kit? Uh, yeah, he does. All right. So bumble kit, you get some interaction with Briar stock. This is kind of fun to do it flipped with the kit so that anybody who wants to interact with the kit gets the opportunity when we're focusing on them for the day. Also, I really love <laughs> this couple. I really do. Like I love this couple right here where we have Mossleaf being reassured in her own way by her wonderful mate that their clan is going to be okay, that their daughter is going to be okay. I really love this couple who's not really a couple but everybody wishes they were because they'd probably have adorable kits because they're just so playful and just so goofy and then what else is going on all right so we're going to take care of these fleas there we go yeah they're going to take care of fleas and oak glade <gasps> oak glade i'm really glad that's not a brightly colored snake or else i would have to panic about now but it isn't all right we'll get rid of all of these these oranges and then honey wish can get rid of her fleas because she's being groomed by the medicine cat and oh i forgot to roll <laughs> oh her infestation was a level three anyway so i roll a dice and then any anywhere from like one to three is how severe the flea infestation is and that's how many medical items we have to use and that was actually a level three infestation so that was worth it look at everybody and look at little bumble kit he just cracks me up the way he is like always defending and watching over everything didn't Briarstock want to sniff him Briarstock, you can go sniff him bumble kit your your beetle is not going to be you need to listen to what may very well be your future mentor and here's here's red paw his mentor is walking away to talk to a kit his dad's ignoring him so that he can be sniff sniffed and he still has his fleas that are making him cranky so i think red paw would probably stalk off for a little bit i don't mean for him to become such a cranky character he just sort of is rolling into that uh, especially because he's kind of like you know he's not a queen and really that makes sense that honey wish should be treated first all right yay briar stock Let's see, and how's Bumble Kit? All right, he's not a queen, so that makes sense that Honey Wish would uh, be treated before him, and he's not an injured medicine apprentice or an injured cat in general, so it makes sense that he would have to go on the bottom of the flea-reducing totem pole, but I'm sure it's just kind of something that would just irk him a little bit more and kind of distract him a little bit more. I wonder, let's see if uh, Briarstock might come out. Did he get anything from his hunting earlier? You only got like one beetle. I think they were too close. I think they need to come off. Where are you going, Bee Kit? Bee Kit. Oh my gosh. Is Bee Kit going to develop a bit of a bond over here with Lizard Paw? Is that what's happening here? He's coming to sniff sniff Lizard Paw. I didn't see this happening. And Lizard Paw went, no, no, no. Come here. You can, you can sniff him. Just because I caught you doesn't mean you have to stop. I actually think, oh, look at him run towards him. I actually think this would be very interesting to, to see. Oh my gosh. That was so cute. That would be interesting to see if Bee Kit and Lizard Paw might form some sort of bond. Lizard Paw is mostly just wanting to do scratching. And he did. You, you guys may have remembered he said something. He's keeping his ears to the ground, as you might say, for that sweet grass that his sister needs. So it's out of season right now, but Lizard Paw seemed really convinced that he could find it somewhere. So, hmm, hmm, I wonder what secrets he's hiding or what things about himself, Robin Paw and her health and the fact that he really, really, really cares about Robin Paw. I wonder what kind of things might uh, prompt him to sort of dig deeper into his own abilities. Hmm. Hints, hints, hints. All right, and I think that actually Bee Kit would come over and kind of pester. I'm gonna literally have him pester <laughs> Lizard Paw until Lizard Paw is like enough and walks off. So we're gonna leave them there. Bumble, Bumble, <gasps> Bumble, you're so cute. Isn't Bumble just the most adorable little guy ever? Now he's hiding inside of the big fish, possibly dreaming of fish even though that's just a you know to them that's just a funky shaped rock uh and speaking of dreaming of fish certain somebody 
is about to wake up and he did promise to uh, kind of escort everybody over to see what's going on at the lake and teach them how to fish. So I think right now he might be a little bit distracted or like everybody's kind of distracted. Oh, and Tommy wants to make sure Robin Paw's okay. All right, Robin Paw, where'd you go? All right, Robin Paw's still snoozing. And, but I think she's going to have to be woken up because Doge's, well, Doge's is snoozing now too. And Doge's isn't feeling very well. Okay, Robin Paw, I will, I will let you go ahead and scratch and kind of like make dirt. And then you have to go back over here and lay down. So I'm going to make Robin Paw kind of lay over there. And I think I have to pull the cats deeper into camp, like away from camp, I mean, to get them to the point where they can find anything useful. Also, oh my gosh. This is kind of adorable. It's like Mossleaf is coming over with Lionstar to watch him hunt. I swear this is such a cute couple. I just really love them together. Did you get a good one? Maybe she's helping. Who knows? We'll have to see. Oh, and Oakglade just got that mini python. Yes, Oakglade. I'm so proud of you. And Redpaw is having trouble catching anything. Have you caught anything for a little while? He's only got beetles. No wonder he would be feeling a little bit frustrated. All right, hang in there, buddy. Was that Willow? Willow, don't be sad. Ignore her, you guys. She's okay. Willow making that dramatic little sob. All right, and we'll have her come over. And maybe I'm going to have Willow work on her writing skill just to kind of be out of the way. Oakglade is way over here, and he is about to be pounced on by a certain kit. Oh, my goodness, Bumble Kit. So Bumble Kit appears to have uh, chosen Oakglade to follow around. Whereas, meanwhile, we have Bee Kit, who has chosen Lizard Paw to pester. So I think that's really interesting to see. Like, we kind of encouraged it, but we're just sort of rolling with the flow of the things that happen in the story. Lizard Paw, are you doing okay? I wonder if he would try to get something. I don't think he'd know how to feed a kit. He would just be like, do you want some honey? Your name is Bee. Do you want honey? I could totally see him doing that. All right. And then Sniff Branch Star and Sniff Crow Feather. Well, those are admirable things. They're not going to help you right now, Lion Star. And then, wait, is Bumble Kit... Okay, Bumble Kit changed his mind. <laughs> Bumble Kit really doesn't seem to know where he wants to go. Bumble Kit, you go ahead and pee here, I think. I think Oak Glade may have... Oh, and go nuzzle Honey Wish. Huh. Maybe... Oh, I think he's actually... We're going to interpret that as kind of tattling on Bumble Kit and being like, Bumble Kit, you know you're not supposed to wander from, like, the clan territory. So we're going to say that he's actually <laughs> sending Bumble Kit to report to Lion Star to kind of confess. In fact, we'll have him do, um, like, two socializations and a sniff sniff in order to confess the fact that he kind of wandered away to Lion Star. All right. And how's Squirrel Leap doing? Good. And Bartram is filling his belly. So this is interesting. Over here, we have Bartram filling his belly on a beetle, which really isn't that great. And I feel like the other cats would be calling out to him and being like, hey, Bartram, it's going to be really awesome when we can go to the lake later. Imagine having real food. I'm so excited. You know how to fish, Bartram. And we're actually going to send him kind of into like the far corner. And what we're going to do, if I can find it, moss leaf. Gross. And that's because she had the grooming thing. I might have to roll to see if she'll... We'll worry about that, like, next season with vomiting from grooming, co maybe causing a few issues. But we're actually going to send Bartram over into the corner here. And we're going to let him train in secret. And we're going to see if he can actually maybe learn how to do a little bit of hunting, even just one hunting skill, and then lead the entire clan. Ooh, rhinoceros beetles and termites. So many beetles, so many beetles, and like one python. Redpaw has just caught more beetles, and I think he feels like they're totally pointless, and he's so frustrated about it. Is Doge's awake yet? Not yet. Honeywish is waiting to be nuzzled by Oakglade. I think Oakglade, where is, is it going to work? Nope, rejected. All right, so Oakley was trying to be really, really super friendly about it. Mossleaf just caught a beetle, too. So Mossleaf is, like, she's another one of the cats that we cannot control when it comes to telling them what to do. Oh, and she wants to sniff Bumble Kit. So I think she may have, she may be in on the fact. Oh, it looks like Lizard Paws. Like, yeah, the kits are running around. What's the big deal about it? And wait, wait, so what's this? Oh, and he wants to play with Bumble Kit, too. BK, I wonder if maybe you're a little bit more high energy, high pitch. I'm getting the feeling that BK is probably a lot more like rambunctious and high pitch and he asks so many questions and he can really wear a bunch of the other cats out. But Squirrel Leap is right there on that energy level too, so I think she would enjoy it. 
And we'll go ahead and, like, yeah, I don't think Lizard Paw would be the kind to tattletale on the fact that the kits were wandering away from camp. The way that actually, oh, oh Bumble Kit, you're so cute. The way that, uh, say, Oak Glade would feel required to. <gasps> he did it! All right, you guys. So Bartram has just managed to start learning some of the basics of hunting. So does that mean that next time, when it is time for them, in fact, can is this is this something to hunt right here? Can he? Let's see if he can catch this beetle. I think he's the kind of cat who, upon the first blush of success, would get a little bit overconfident. So let's see if Bartram can kind of keep up his big fish tails and be able to perhaps bring some big fish back to Robin Paw, who's still resting. And oh, Red Paw might catch a bird. <gasps> he might actually catch a cardinal. He could take it to Robin Paw. That I think would make him feel better. I think if he could do something that like big of taking one of the first solid pieces of prey and a bird, no less, that probably has a few feathers and he does have a few feathers on him. But if he could do that, I feel like we might be able to take away the lost a friend motive be or like negative moodlet because he does care about his sister. Well, if they were best friends, maybe I could do that. So many ways we could go with different directions. Oh, no. Red Paw didn't catch whatever he was after, so he didn't get it. Oh, Red Paw and Bartram both have a little bit of ill luck that way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we've got some big fishtails that Bartram is kind of going to have to deal with. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see what Bartram's going to do. This looks hilarious, actually, by the way. So yeah, we're going to have to see what Bartram and his big fishtails of being able to catch big fish, <laughs> how that's going to turn out. I think the clan would actually... He, got, he became a scaredy cat and ran away. What? He ran away? I don't believe that. Squirrelip, what are you doing? Squirrelip, okay, and she's going to be groomed by Oaklade. Oaklade is like going around. He seems really concerned. He's checking everybody. <laughs> BK is just grooming himself next to Squirrelip. Okay, it's, it's not the most elegant of pictures. Squirrelip peeing, Oaklade being like, you guys, are you all right? I'm just checking on everybody. He's already going around the perimeter all day today and checking in on everyone. Redpaw frustrated and lying down in the clover, unable to catch anything but a couple beetles. So yeah, the clan still isn't able to get enough food to eat. Robin Paw needs more food. Dogaze is recovering pretty well from the fact that her apprentice almost died and kind of just taking this as a sign from Star Clan that she needs to really work hard at understanding her old skills of all of the mushrooms that she really learned about from Deer Clan and also all of the new skills of all of the plants here. Lizard Paw apparently doesn't care if there's kits wandering around. He's totally fine with that. I'm not sure how, how Lion Star is going to take the kits wandering around. I think he's going to give a very solemn sniff Kind of like a very solemn story and we'll send Bumble Kit back into camp. So we'll say Bumble Kit kind of learned that he is being watched out for by a lot of the clan members. But I don't know, when you're a little kid, sometimes you feel good when you like wander off somewhere you know you're not supposed to be. And then you have people looking out for you. So I think Bumble Kit would take it like that. And yeah, I think that Lion Star, who also was not able to gather anything but a few beetles, some of which are very important medicine beetles, and a cardinal, one bird, one bird among all of these clan members that's just not going to do it but i think that he's also really looking forward to bartram living up to uh to his big words there and being able to bring fish into the clan so we'll have to see if bartram is going to be able to live up to that or if there may be something very dangerous Ooh, look at that briarstock get that lizard or if there may be something very dangerous and unexpected waiting for us over there over the edge. What the heck is that? Oh, it's a beetle. More beetles! More beetles in Moss Clan. If there may be something waiting, like dogs that we might have to fight, or two legs that might come by, or horses that could, like, step on us. Who knows? Or even just risks and threats inside of the lake itself, because we will start rolling for something to happen. If a cat catches, like, a crocodile or a shark, especially in a freshwater lake, then come on. We kind of have to have some sort of effect to that. That is another thing I am working on. But I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing a peek into Moss Clan today. It's going to be very, very interesting to see if Bartram can actually live up to his big words about being able to bring food into the clan. And I have not forgotten that a, a, certain, a certain squirrel was definitely thinking about things and a certain doe was definitely, I don't know if doe gaze was actually. I think, I think it was squirrel leap. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was squirrel leap. It may have been doe gaze. 
But let's just say that there's going to be a two-leg adventure coming up to lead us into season two. I have not forgotten. We're just kind of taking our time working into it so we can really enjoy the clan. So thank you guys so much. Oh my goodness, everybody's doing so many things. Hopefully Dogeys can wake up soon and take care of the fleas. I don't think Redpaw is having a really great day. Um, I'm not sure how he's going to take the fact that he's kind of at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to curing the fleas. And it looks like some of the kits are starting to get a little hungry. Oh boy, we definitely need more food in this clan. Things are starting to look very, very bare. So, hmm. Hmm. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.